And we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 72 of Global Citizens. My name is Calvin. I am the show's host, and I am also its creator. So my guest for today has actually, in a sense, made a digital cameo some time back. So there was one time that I actually told the story about a girl who has never seen a male in her entire young life. <laughs> so the reason being is that well, while this show has always been an advocate for a third culture kid, even her story would babble an actual third culture kid because she grew up on a boat for seven years of her life. So today, in order to tell about her story, she is also going to promote her book in support of uh, Black Lives. In support of Black Lives, yeah? So without further ado, allow me to welcome Miss Celine Collins. So hello, Celine, how are you? Hello, I'm great. How are you? And for the record, just to echo out from one of our dear friends from Third Culture Talk, she's not related to Phil Collins. Okay, carry on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, uh, Celine, uh, before we begin the first question, maybe if you don't mind, uh, I already shared just a summary of your life, but maybe you want to tell about it more in details. Um, yep, yeah, so I guess. I was born in Newcastle, or just outside of Newcastle, um, in England. And then when I was about two weeks old, we, well, my family moved to Florida because my dad always worked on boats around the Caribbean as an engineer. Um, let's see. Yeah, from Florida, we lived there for seven years. So I kind of got an American accent, which sometimes pops back up when I least suspect it. Um, <laughs> Then when I was seven years old, my family bought a boat on an island called Curacao in the middle of the Caribbean. Um, and then from there, we stayed around the Caribbean for a few years and then eventually made it to Colombia, um, Panama, Ecuador, the Galapagos and Peru. And then all the way back to England, just in time for me to finish high school. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I know you mentioned, okay. I know you mentioned, I mean, it's still not an ordinary stuff for TCK, right? But for your case is you grow up on the boat itself. So is that any difference though? Because for us, at least we are, we have a certain months or even years to be on a certain place to ingratiate ourselves, to adopt its culture. For your case, is that the same kind of experience? Um, I'd say not really like i think a lot of boat kids actually don't define themselves as tck's because the influence of your parents home culture is so strong like when you're in the boat you're physically isolated from the culture of the place where you're living yep. so it's like i remember we would in switch well i would try and switch to speaking spanish whenever we went ashore and then come back home and everything's in english again and so, yeah, there was that kind of cultural shift, but I never really managed to adopt the place where we were staying or the culture of the place where we were staying because we would be moving like every two weeks. I think the longest we stayed in one place was Panama. And that was about six months when we were waiting for a passport renewal. But apart from that, it was every two weeks we'd move or sail, spend most of the time sailing. <laughs> Has anyone ever like be suspicious of looking at your passport? It's like two weeks. What are you doing there? Oh my goodness! <laughs> Sketchy. Did you want to put it? How about that? Yeah. Has there ever been such experience? Um, not really, because I think my passport ran out of date. Like just as I came back to the UK, so I lost all of those stamps, <laughs> and so I just look like a normal person in my passport now. <laughs> Um, okay. All yeah. right. Okay. We will be <laughs> talking about that, about your stamp collection, in a sense. All right. Sorry. I kind of wear off a bit of more from my, even my very first question. All right. So for those of you who are watching this for the very first time, Global Citizen is a live webcast whereby I invited people who has experienced a multicultural lifestyle. So for both Celine and I, we are both TCK. So this is my main, the main groups that I advocated strongly because I feel that there needs to be a representation of our story. 
And along with that, there are those who may have an experience of different multicultural lifestyles, such as military kit, parachute kits, and of course, the expatriates, digital nomads. Uh, I want people to actually understand the difference between living in a country is not the same as when you are there for a vacation. While yes, you are exposed to a new kind of culture, new kind of lifestyle, you're back to your home country after a certain period of time, right? And you are back to being normal like that. Whereas for us, we have to learn to, as like Salim's case and my case, we need to learn different way of speaking. We need to learn different kind of mindset in order to be accepted in a new kind of place. All right. So my very first question, sorry, it's a bit, a bit off because your story is, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I have enough questions to actually tell everything, but I'll try my best, okay? <laughs> Thank you, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. And I'm sorry, but this is, uh, of course, a definite. The very first question is, how do you define home? And wait, there's a big but. There's a way, there's a big but here. You cannot say it's with your family. You cannot say it's with your family. No, that's a correct <laughs> answer. I want... If I have to, I will make people say a location that they like, which is better than even their own home country. So yeah, go ahead. Oh, that's such a horrible question to ask on a TCK show. <laughs> no, I'm um, just kidding. But yeah, yeah, well, I don't. You don't have to say which area is better. I'm just kidding. But yeah, uh, which area you feel the geographically? I guess is you are most attuned to. I mean. Uh, I'm going to cheat a little and say it's like on a boat because oh. I feel a boat is technically its own geographic location Fair and enough. people kind of have their own specific culture that's like not really American, not really English, you're not really anything, you're just like gelling together for a certain amount of time. So yeah, I feel most at home with boat people on boats <laughs> rather than in any okay. specific country. <laughs> But Panama enough. people. Yes. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> well, as a former law student, yes, you can use boat as a location, by the way. It's quite a fun <laughs> fact. But yeah, that's a little cheating, but okay, it's acceptable. <laughs> so, well. Nice. Set the tone for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> 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 I will find a way not to. I will find a way to make sure you don't cheat on this, yeah, man. That's not. <laughs> if this is a, your tribute to the late great Diego Maradona, who recently passed away because he scored with handouts of goals, let's just take it as that. Okay, so how has the experience been like though with repatriation? You are in. The, you are back in the UK, right? And. Actually, last time when the COVID first started, I think your parents got it. Then after that, you were outside. I think you were living in Scotland at that time. Yeah. So, yeah, you were outside of the of the city. So I hope everything's okay there. But how's your experience been with repatriating though? Is it is there any kind of different feeling than living on a boat, whereby you are constantly moving around and the people that you interacted are people who are boat people then mm. being on a dry land where you now have to commute every time in order to go to a location you need to you need to acclimate yourself with the people there how is it like i have to be careful what i say here because i don't want to get deported um <laughs> i think yeah it was very hard at first so i was 14 years old when we came back to the UK and I joined two weeks into that high school year. So all of like the cliques had already been formed. Everyone had known everyone since like primary school. So like since before they could speak, they were speaking to each other and I just had no idea what I was doing. Like I couldn't even cross a road properly because I'd never had to in my life before really <laughs> without adult supervision. <laughs> so. Yeah, I had no idea like what kind of crossings pedestrians can just cross and what kinds you need to like wait for the lights to change or anything like that. And on my road to school every morning, I had to cross four lanes of a big highway <laughs> to get there. So I really had trial by fire there. Um, I was lucky to survive. <laughs> and, I'm crossing the road. Wow. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I sailed through a hurricane to get to this country, but crossing the road nearly took me out. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Make way, I think a tidal storm is... Okay, so I can't imagine when you see puppies, it's like, are you, if they bark at you, and be like, oh my god, what are you doing? You... <laughs> What are you? What are you? You you're not a crab. You're not a seashell. What are you? Did not you a shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I God. mean, yeah, boat dogs are a thing and they're a blessing. But yeah, I was like very confused about just how to handle like the average person in the street because like in Ecuador where we've been living for a while before we decided to turn back to the UK, like everyone on the street would say hi to you or they say hola. And yeah. I had to like break that habit when I came back to Florida and then the UK because I just kept on saying hola to everyone I passed in the street. And that's a very not English thing to do. We're very quiet people. Avoid eye contact at all costs and things like that. How do you deal though with the cultural differences? And like, I mean, I think you you went through you went through a lot more living on a boat, right? And yet, dealing with the cultural differences is something that could be a struggle for any kind of TCP. I mean, I practically created this podcast because I'm suffering of uh, <laughs> the difference in culture. Yeah, I mean, there's so many stuff that I don't understand why it's considered wrong when you are you maybe as a paying customer could just should have some basic stuff like when your order need to be taken properly but even then you need to learn how to say it here in order to actually get your order done so which one is tougher surviving on a boat or handling cultural differences um i would say handling cultural differences is definitely a lot harder like I'm like you, I created a blog because I just wanted a place to rant about how hard it can be sometimes. And um, yeah, definitely living on land was a big culture shock for me, especially because I never realized I was different until I had like a normal to compare myself to. So like I grew up thinking, oh yeah, I'm English. This is like everyone around me who says they're English, they act the way that English people act. And a lot of the people around me were like, 50, 60 year old English people who were living on a boat in the Caribbean in retirement, which obviously isn't a normal thing. Um, yeah, and then I came to high school, obviously, and like just even there was kind of a language barrier because I'd never heard the Northern accent before. And it's a very hard, almost Germanic accent, <laughs> but mixed with English. And so they miss out a lot of sounds when they're speaking. And so I just couldn't understand a word anyone was saying for the first three weeks. Uh, not to worry. Uh, my former boss used to be, my former boss is from UK and he has a Cockney accent. He has a British, oh, no. he has a Cockney British <laughs> accent. So you don't know whether he's scolding you, whether he's praising you, which is a very, very rare occurrence, or whether he's firing you. So <laughs> not to worry. Even I, yeah, I have that kind of difficulty too. So not to worry about yeah. that. If a person is British enough, they can insult you and it'll take you at least a year to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the positive side, they're nice people to have in a bar. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, <a> lot. Okay. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, okay. You hear that, guys? So I'm not <laughs> the only one who's weird for having difficulty with speaking with a Brit. <laughs> No, I'm uh, British and I have enough trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> there we are. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> okay. What? Uh, because if I'm not mistaken, I think when before the before we actually before we actually go on broadcast, we, it was from a while back. I know you actually did a lot better in terms of education compared to even the people who. <laughs> your peers right i know you definitely earned some earth about that but how do you think the living outside of the system for a while then after coming back actually help you with it so <laughs> um basically i started being homeschooled when we bought the boat when i was seven and okay. um 
trying to figure out how to put this. Um, my mom took over my schooling, basically. And I was really far ahead with English because I always loved to read and I always loved to like make things up and then write them down so I could tell people about them. Um, but I always hated math with like a passion. And so, yeah, same here. Same here. yeah virtual high five. Yeah. <laughs> Can we do that or elbow? Yeah, elbow, there we go. Right. <laughs> Keep things safe. Yay. <laughs> so okay, every so, single... Yeah. Yeah, so every single day after we bought the boat, my mom would wake me up, sit me down at the table in the middle of the boat, and we would practice my times tables until I could recite them like from my head. And that took about a year. Wow. <laughs> like I didn't have any days off apart from Christmas and my birthday. And so I feel like I got a nice work ethic out of that, if nothing else. I still don't know my eight times tables, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> And yeah, 16, so 24, 32, <laughs> 40, 50? after 48, it gets a bit fuzzy. <laughs> All right. Well, we don't have to talk about that. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, sorry about that. Your work ethic. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, basically, like the way we did homeschooling, like other boats did it different, but we basically did it. So I had a set amount of work. So I would do like two pages from my mass workbook and then like four pages of my English workbook. And then as soon as I'd finished my work, work was done for the day, I could go play or swim or whatever I wanted to do, like world was my oyster. And so I guess that just taught me to like do my work fast and get it right. Because if I got it wrong, my mum would check. Oh. All of my answers, and then I'd have to pause playtime and come back and be yelled at for half an hour for not knowing my times table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Do you think, like, I mean, well, I mean, the lack of social connection is one thing, but do you think, like, because there's no competition, you don't have to worry about your peers, you don't have to worry about peer pressure, etc. Do you think that that is actually something that has helped you with? with education maybe um yeah maybe i think i'm quite a competitive person naturally like if i see someone doing something better than me i want to find out how they've done it and how i can steal it uh, <laughs> in a respectful way giving them all the credit <laughs> uh, and, emulating yeah. emulating we are not stealing there anything we there we go yeah, no theft here <laughs> <laughs> It's the highest form of praise. <laughs> yes. They say um, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, guys. Okay. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that kind of helped me when I got into um, a classroom environment because, like, the school kind of lied when they took me in and they said I'd be put in all of the highest classes. And then they put me into, like, the medium and low classes. And so I kind of like eventually figured out that there was another class that was like learning more advanced stuff. And that made me really annoyed and I wanted to do better. So I just spoke to all of the teachers, which was like not a thing that a lot of kids at my high school did. Like you always just kept your head down and didn't say anything to the teachers, oh, no matter cool. what. Like you could be bleeding out on the floor and you'd be like, I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, I got, to move up through classes quite a lot quicker because I just wanted to be good, <laughs> I guess, which I think I got from homeschooling. Hmm. Okay, okay. That's actually <clears throat> that's actually a really unique information, I guess. I think it's because we, I mean, even for a normal TCK, one of the thing about us is that, well, we grow up outside of our supposed system. So we have our own opinion when we feel that the local system that everyone should know doesn't work for us. But the thing is, is that a lot of times maybe we try to find a way to make it work for us. We don't, I think it's because sometimes we are, we are quite familiar is that, oh, if we go against, if we go against the authority, it's not something that is going to benefit us. So we learn to find a way to cheat within the system itself. But for your case, of course, you went outside the box of it and well, you earned it. So I think that is actually something that is worth 
emulating. I'm not stealing from anybody here. <laughs> not yet. There's time to learn. Oh, don't reveal that. <laughs> don't reveal that. Okay. What part of what timing am I in? I need to edit this out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. This is live anyway. Yeah. So okay. It's too late. <laughs> Okay, uh, I actually, there's actually a movie called Mean Girls, if you have ever watched it. It's about the Lindsay Lohan before she gone, she gone nuts, etc. Yeah. I think it's, in a sense, it's a TCK life. Like, she suggested back to South to Africa, back to the US, right? For yeah. your case, of course, is living on different parts of the world on, on a vessel. Then you are back to living on a dry land living with the people, living with regular people. What was your experience with that though? I actually recall, I actually asked this because I recalled in that in Dan and Caetano's podcast, you were actually watching some sea creatures trying to climb each other down. And was that a joke about, you thought, oh, this is how you make friends with people. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. Um, so basically it was in the Caribbean and we were just um, motoring from like the boat onto the beach and we stopped because we saw a puffer fish and a crab and they were fighting and the crab had the puffer fish's eyes in its claws and oh. yeah it was like pretty metal even for a nature documentary and yeah I was like hey they're just hugging maybe that's how you make friends <laughs> this is how I'll learn <laughs> Wait, I'm just trying to form of a bond with you. Did yeah. you really do that? Please don't tell me you did that. And if you do, please send me a video of it. I'll uh, share it to my audience. Oh, I wish I'd been that smooth in high school. <laughs> uh, don't worry, high school never ends for us. Yeah, <laughs> we're always mentally trapped there. <laughs> Oh god. Okay. <laughs> well, now take note, people. Don't hug around anybody and claw at somebody's eye when you're trying to make friends. Yep, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> okay, moving <laughs> <hang> on. <laughs> okay, though. No. What do you think, though, has been the biggest blessing so far in your life? As a TCK and to balance it out, to balance it out, yeah. Yeah. What do you think has been a curse being one also? <laughs> Two very good questions that I'm still figuring out the answer to. <laughs> yeah, that's why I asked them. Yeah. <laughs> I think Thank God I'm the one hosting the show. I'm thank God I'm the one hosting the show. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, one day, one day I'll have my own podcast and I'll bounce that question back to you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have 71 references to go through. Don't worry. Mm, that's <laughs> yeah, true. I okay. to, uh, at least some answer that won't kick me out of my own home country. So, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So the, the floor is yours. Um, let's see. Biggest blessing. I would say. In a way, it's almost kind of hard to remove the blessings from the hardships because they all go towards like making you who you are. And I think that's the same whether you're a TCK or not. So, yeah, I don't. It's a, oh, it's a hard question. <laughs> um, I think definitely like one of the pros of being TCK is, of course, how flexible we are. Yeah. And so, like, being able to go into a high school and have confidence to be like, hey, I'm not where I deserve to be. <laughs> Move me up. Hmm. Slap my teacher across the face. I never did that. <laughs> Sorry, what? But, yeah, I don't think... <laughs> yeah, we can cut that out of a live broadcast. It's fine. Please take note, global citizens do not encourage violence. If any such violence, it's the guest's own. So I am not participated, participant, nor am I accomplished in that. Uh, go ahead, yeah. 
Yeah, you'd laugh harder if you knew how clean cut I actually was in high school. <laughs> so yeah, I don't think I would have had the confidence to go up and like be as confident as I was if I hadn't been able to travel all around the world and be kind of forced to learn to interact with all different kinds of people. Because especially on boats, you meet like rich people, poor people, poor people who've like worked their entire lives to go on boats. And then there's like rich TCKs that like only go on the boat for the summer. And that's like, they call themselves boat kids. And yeah. <laughs> so, what was the feeling when you meet these kids? It's like, wow, a fellow children. I've heard so much about you. Is that it? <laughs> or. How was the feeling yeah. like or it at least when you were growing up before you live on a boat at least you used in you just live in the castle so <laughs> at least okay another human i, I know <laughs> what you look like how was it <laughs> yeah i mean i'd heard about other kids in stories and songs so, <laughs> um yeah it was always really great because we'd have this thing called the net in the morning where that would kind of be like the news for boat people and it was just like the local news so it's like oh so and so has like an anchor for sale it's this much radio them if you want to hear that um and then like right at the very end of the news my dad would like pick up the radio and be like hey anyone got any kids we have a kid can we put them together please <laughs> <laughs> If anyone answered, it was always happy, happy times. <laughs> All right, we have a bunch of little brats together. All right, you guys play yeah. along. It's all little children, but I think yeah. it, no. But even if for us, even we are not boat kids, it's not something that we tend to like. I guess it's because you just clump us together, expects us to be friends. It's still something that is difficult. I mean. Asian kids tend to have that kind of experience and we'll be like, okay, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> so what's up? <laughs> but in your case, was that something that you are okay with or it's something that you makes you appreciate more about companionship? Um, I think in a way, like, hmm. <laughs> well, it was always awkward at first because it would kind of be like either you'd get dumped on the stranger's boat, but there was a kid there, or this random kid would get dumped on your boat and you'd have to like really quickly work out something you had in common. <laughs> and like, do you like to play with dolls? Me too. Do you live on a boat? Me too. We have so much in common. Did you drown? <laughs> yeah. Did you drown? Or did you imitate Jack Sparrow? You know that uh, they li he live on a boat. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you imitate Jack Sparrow. Me too. <laughs> He's my oh, favorite character. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of embarrassing photos of me in a Jack Sparrow costume. <laughs> oh, okay. How do I get in touch with your parents on that? <laughs> <laughs> Never have oh. removing them from the internet. <laughs> oh, is there any network for boats so I can find out about this? Uh, if anybody knows about this, please leave in the comment box. I would love to know more about this. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, do you think though, if you have never lived the, this life on a boat, do you think that how different do you think you'll be compared to who you are now? So different. <laughs> like I think about who I was. Well, like the limited chance I had to be a person before the boat. And I was kind of just like a loner anyway, just like on the off chance. Like I always like to play by myself in the garden. Oh. And if I had kids over, that was fine. If I didn't, I still had the garden. Um, yeah, so from that perspective, I think I didn't really change that much socially because of the boat. But after the boat i definitely had i guess a deeper sense of everything because i think living without tv just does that to a kid anyway i guess i'm old fashioned that way but i was just the only thing i had i didn't have a computer until i was like 12 years old so no internet i didn't find out about gangnam style until a bunch of kids chased me down the dock screaming hey sexy lady 
and I just thought it was a weird compliment. <laughs> and so, yeah. I mean, I read more books than I probably would have. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, okay. That's, in a sense, it does open. Yeah, in a sense, it does form a unique mindset and an and well, a highly intellectual mind. Of course, it's yeah. different, but it's just that it's not. Maybe if you associate like with a boat and with living on a boat and living with people, I guess it's still mm -hmm. a completely new thing. So, ah, okay, this is this is something that's what interesting to be, to be note of for a lot of people, I guess. All Thank right. you. Welcome. All right. So yeah. So I think we definitely do not have the. We definitely would like to cover a lot more of your TCK story, but this is, of course, another one of the priority of why I invited you here. So mm -hmm. please elaborate more on your book, if you don't mind. Maybe just showing it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In support of Black yeah. Lives, though. Uh, what was the idea behind it? Um. Yeah. So the idea behind it was, I think. Well, I was like a recent graduate in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic when George Floyd obviously happened and then the ensuing riots. And, oh, yeah, sorry about that. am I here? Yeah, Are we yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. I think the signal dropped for a second. <laughs> sorry, I yeah, accidentally so. watched my cam. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> that was okay. Um, yeah, so then obviously all these riots were going on and I was like personally in the middle of a job search that just wasn't going anywhere because of like obviously the economy up in flames. Um, and I thought, well, I'm not putting any of the skills I learned in my like English and creative acting degree. I'd already come out with a book of poetry before in my like first year of uni. And then in my second year of university, I'd been involved in a publishing project where I was kind of like in charge of a bunch of people and making sure everything got done. And so I was like, maybe I could do that for Black Lives Matter and just donate the money to charity. So I put out a call over Instagram for just like any writers with any skill sets, just send me any writing about race or racism experiences with discrimination. It could be like the length of a tweet. I was just like really wanting to get something out there. And I never actually expected to get any replies. So when I did, it was really <laughs> great to Why see. Why did you ask me? Why did you ask me? I actually, re I actually wrote an anti-racism article. Really? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, I think I posted in our WhatsApp chat group, I think. You, oh, cool. I think maybe you missed that out, sorry. Yeah, I think it was because I actually didn't focus on anything TCK until right. like, about a month or so into like the pandemic so we probably hadn't met yet <laughs> maybe <laughs> if we do part two <laughs> hey yeah yeah um so yeah got a lot of response from mixed race people indigenous people black people and a bunch of like all kinds of writing really so in the book we have short stories essays poems articles all about race and then a little section at the back that's just like general fiction for you to flip to in case anything in the major part of the book gets a bit heavy. Because I know I definitely felt that way when I was like editing and fact checking a lot of the essays. Because we have two timelines of racism in the US and in the UK. And so obviously researching that and making sure we got everything right was emotionally hard, but also something that needed to be done. And also in the back of the book, I made sure to include a bunch of resources to charities and anti-racism websites and movies and shows where you can learn more and sort of yeah, be a good ally or just learn more if that's what you're interested in. Okay, I actually have, well, this next question can be a little bit controversial to some people, yeah? <laughs> but I always take pride because I dare to ask this difficult question. So one of the way that I've been using to teach about different culture is by using the letter six or nine that is located on the floor. Let's say from my point of view is I look at a six from your end, it looked like a nine, right? Yeah. Uh, the thing is, is because, well, we have different way of looking at things. I mean, 
the best way to actually know what number is it supposed to be on the floor is by asking who is the person who painted because well he's his job so he will know what it is the thing is is this i actually when i actually released my article there was actually mixed reaction to it sadly it's hmm. like and this does not come from just any regular person some of them are tck's who hmm. Surprise me is actually not so receptive of an article that is intended to be anti-racist. My theory on this is actually maybe it's because they might have spent time in a country that has a heavy level of conservatism. So when they actually adapt that mindset, so it becomes a part of them. I mean, there's nothing we can blame about that. How do you think though this could be countered is like, if we, how can we get other people to actually sit down and tell us, hey, you, this is where you are wrong, actually. This is how our life is supposed to be. How do you think about that? Um, well, I think I went through a similar thing, actually, when I was recruiting people for the anthology. So, like, I just messaged every writer I knew and was like, hey, I'm doing this thing. You're right, right? A lot of, well, I say a couple of writers that I messaged were like, actually, you know, I'm a white person and I don't think it's really my place to speak on this. Yep. And at first I was like, yeah, I guess I see where you're coming from. And then the more I read and the more I like edited and heard other people's stories, I was like, actually, that point of view makes no sense. Because, you know, people historically have been in positions of power and we've been in places where we've been able to make and we obviously haven't or as many as we should have or could have and so yeah I think it's important to I guess get comfortable being uncomfortable I think is the official slogan and there's also an article actually within the book that is a kind of basic toward how to do objects like racism and it's really just about making sure you have the empathy to see where the other person's coming from, but at the same time, like, sticking to your ground and being respectful, but also giving them good reasons as to why your point of view is something that needs to be expressed and something that needs to be spoken about, if that makes sense. Nah, it does, it does. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, so how do you feel, though? Uh... Well, the thing is, is with pandemic, one of the main thing that we see now is that one of the older ways of doing things, the formula of if it's not broken, we don't need to fix it, is no longer usable. It's because now a lot of the sad part is a lot of people lost their job is because they don't have enough structure, or they don't have enough resources in the past or even awareness to actually Evolve, evolve their business to interact online and uh, there are those who fortunately can still make a living but for their case is of course now it with the trend of remote working i mean you are also you're also working remotely if i'm not mistaken yeah how do you feel though this multicultural a multicultural awareness could be applied in a new normal especially in a work setting because in the past, maybe, well, we, I mean, there's never been any kind of rules or any kind of guidelines, etc. Mm -hmm. But now we realize that now we have to, maybe we can work with people who are not living with the same country as us. So how do you think, though, this uh, awareness of the multicultural lifestyle be transferred into a working world? I think, well... You like to ask hard questions. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Yeah. A lot of my guests don't like it or that, but... <laughs> it makes for yeah. better. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, well, part of being multicultural... Well, can't even say the word. Multicultural or having multicultural awareness is, um, I guess, being hard to offend and knowing how to maintain respect between people 
So for instance, yeah. like a German person and a UK person have very different oh. like yeah. stereotypical you personalities. You don't want to make them, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> and so like when I'm interacting with some of my friends from Germany, there are things that like they'll say and I'll be like, oh, oh, they don't like me anymore, do they? And then I'll like talk to them about it and they'll be, no? I reacted to that in a completely normal way. What are you talking about? <laughs> and then I know for next eyes. time. You should yeah. your eyes. There we go. Are we friends yet? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> but, yeah, I actually <laughs> fall off my chair when I heard that story. <laughs> I can't stop laughing about it. <laughs> oh, God. This is what I'll be known for yeah. 10 years uh, down the line. <laughs> okay, so claw the people, claw your, claw your companions' eyes, people. It may make yep. a good friendship. Yeah, also you translates me, to look at the workplace. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, how much editing do I have to do for this thing? <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> too late, too late. <laughs> yeah, there's already several. Oh, crap. Okay, I better not say the number of viewers. All right, so yeah. Oh, dear. All right, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Oh, God. Um, okay, so now, yeah, sorry, uh, sorry, back to your point before we start clawing people's eyes out. Yep, so obviously the best way to live in a multicultural space is to claw people's eyes out. But once you're finished doing that, maybe just talk to them. <laughs> well, how was your day? <laughs> yeah. so it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, you were saying about sorry. You were saying about before clawing people's eyes out again. Yeah, I guess just being willing to make mistakes and then being able to make up for them or just like apologize, move on, and then keep that knowledge with you as you move on to like different multicultural spaces. So. Yeah, I don't know if that's the answer you're looking for, but I think it's the best one I have at the yeah. moment. <laughs> I mean, it's good. I mean, my for me is because I tell people is not to look at stereotype. The thing is, is that I mean, if you have never met an Italian before, yeah, and the only thing you know is living in a video game, you would assume every Italian is like Mario from yeah. because he's a plumber and he's an Italian, which is definitely too far from the truth. I mean. I have had a chance to meet. I've had several of them on my show, and they are an extremely passionate individuals. And the thing is, is that for them, of course, this is their way of communication. So the thing is, is that don't look at the stereotype. I mean, like to add on to what you say, when you are approaching different cultures, I guess is for people to actually keep an open mind and not to be too prideful about what you know, because if you approach somebody who are of different background from you and then you make a mistake just be just it's okay to tell just be considerate about it like maybe if you don't understand how to say their name you can be like maybe pardon me if it's okay can you tell me how to pronounce it so i don't want to say it wrongly i mean it is a form of respect so that's pretty that is pretty acceptable i think yeah exactly mm. Yeah, I completely agree with that. <laughs> uh, glad it works. Glad it works. And please don't and please don't claw their eyes out. Please don't claw their eyes out. Yeah. PSA. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I didn't make an announcement that this show do not do not advocate violence. Where is it? Oh crap. All right. Oh that crap. <laughs> It'll be there somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I hope I didn't do that. All right, I got two final questions for you, and this is something that could be quite fun. Uh, okay, 
if you got a chance though to create a character or even a series or even a book to address the issue of growing up outside of your own culture what would it be yeah i think hmm i mean i've certainly thought about it before like <clears throat> I've got a book planned that's about all of the different types of boat TCKs you can encounter because like a lot of people don't really know that boat, pe boat people have their own kind of culture and like little subsets of like boat people and boat kids that you meet and so I'd like to sort of I think that could be an interesting thing to write about and maybe people would like to read it but besides that, I'd love to see a TCK series that, again, has a lot of different types of TCKs and maybe they meet uh, at an international school. Um, yeah. What's the use of my show again? <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously things like this are great, but I mean, like, TV shows. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Tony? Uh, oh, wait, I see one of my viewers. Tony, <laughs> take that note. Yeah, let's yeah. get Netflix on this. <laughs> Just a tech note, guys. Uh, Tony Tony Pietra Arjuna, who is actually a movie director, he created Shadow Play, which has won numerous awards in Malaysia. And yes, he is also a TCK, by the way. So yeah, Tony, can you please take note of that? All right. <laughs> okay, sorry, Sarah. Well, yeah, I'd like to see TCK kind of show where they all meet at an international school and then like obviously disperse like TCKs usually do but like the story follows them maybe through their lives or just through like their university years or something like that and like they meet up they go away again and kind of making that a bit more normalized I guess maybe bringing it down a little bit like the ending of a rom-com is like the classic the guy chases the girl through the airport and then stops her from getting on the plane and then they just stay in that one city have babies in that one city who then have more babies in that one city <laughs> and it's like why do none of these people think long distance relationships uh... exist you know so yeah more yeah. multiculturalism into fiction <laughs> Oh, why? Okay. <laughs> okay. Huh. That's quite a, that's quite a unique concept. Huh. Yeah, uh, okay, we can make them like a lost voice instead. We can make a bunch of TCK, put them on a boat instead of like the lost voice instead on the book. Oh, this could be fun. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> hey. <laughs> or like, I think All Avatar right. The Last Airbender actually did it really well. Like, yes. I, think I was saying when yes. we started that Avatar, when I was a kid, it showed the boat life better than like any series I'd ever seen because it was just a bunch of people moving from place to place, getting to know some people and then leaving again. And it wasn't a big deal, but like it still left an impact on the characters. And I guess just seeing that realistically portrayed like for boat TCKs, but just for like all TCKs, I think seeing that kind of representation could be really important. Well, we have months to years. I think for yours is hours, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes just 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, wow. Really? Wow. Dang, I think I, the I, shortest. I have more time for that. <laughs> we should have more time for that. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the Maybe shortest friendship I've ever had was about a night, <laughs> but we're still good what? Facebook friends. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Hope you're watching this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. I should play a part two for this <laughs> somewhere down the line, man. All yeah, right. That'd be cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, though. Uh, yeah. So we'll wrap it up with this question, though. What <laughs> would you hope society be for yourself, for the upcoming generation of TCKs? with your books and those who are now much more aware of your story yeah yeah i think making repatriation a smoother process is obviously really big important thing to see 
happen a bit more. So like, obviously with more TCK stories being told on podcasts and in like general media. Um, yeah, because I remember I had this very specific experience where my first day of high school, people were asking where I'm from. And I said, oh, I'm from a boat, but the last place I was in was in Peru. And they were like, oh, Peru, where's that? And I was South America. Oh, where's that? And I was like, huh? <laughs> That's a continent. How can you not know where that is? And so <laughs> just sort of <laughs> like getting more people to kind of no basic geography, I guess, would be step one to that particular issue. But also be aware that not everyone has had the same experiences. And obviously, like in high school, you're going to get picked on if you're different anyway. But the more we make things sound normal to the average high schooler by showing it in movies and in books and things like that, the more easy it's going to be when it comes time for like the next generation of TCKs to go back to their passport country, not know a thing about who they are really, and then be like, oh yeah, I'm a TCK, because so many of us don't actually find out until we're old and by then it's kind of not too late, but it's kind of, it could have made things easier the earlier, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. <laughs> And I think also the normalizing of the term. I think the thing is, is that, I mean, like the late Kobe Bryant and uh, former President Barack Obama and a lot of other celebrities, actually, while yeah. people know that they live this kind of life, it's never, there wasn't a common term for it. Like people don't know about it. So they will just thought, oh, okay. So uh, like former President Barack Obama is an African-American who grew up in this multicultural lifestyle in a multicultural household but okay at the end of the day he's america's first ever african-american president so i think it's the also the highlight of this actual term and the existence of this term yeah absolutely like there was a movie that came out about barack obama in his university years it was called barry i don't know if you've seen it yeah i think he was yeah. called barry obama and he was playing basketball or something yeah. yeah, but I yeah. actually know that because I was reading a Spider-Man comic book. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I got kicked out of the library for that because I fell asleep. All right, <laughs> so that's another story. <laughs> what? Library is a good place to sleep. Yeah, well, they are. To read, but quiet. the thing is, is, after you're done with your project and stuff, you want to read comics. It's fine after yeah, you're done exactly. with your work. <laughs> yeah, they're open all night if you're all in right. a university. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it could be a good place. You don't have to pay your, you still have to pay your rent, sadly, though. But okay, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. But, okay, yeah, I was so like, okay, I was, uh, I was quite worried that this episode was actually be a lot more colorful with the language from the boat people, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this works. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, all right. Okay, so <laughs> we'll wrap it up. So, yeah. Anything you want to add on to that? Um, nope. Thank you very much for having me. It's been really fun. <laughs> okay, I really need to find a way to get a sequel for this. This has been really fun, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I think half of my entire question is actually gone out the window since <laughs> okay there's always even, room for a sequel even though it's a hybrid but <laughs> okay and with that before i end i need to thank these individuals is of course i earlier mentioned him mr tony pietra azuna uh ivan uh thank you so much mr oni d i'm sorry if i said your name wrongly i hope it's i said i tried to bet my best to say it and of course, my good buddy, Ben. How are you, man? So yeah, uh, and last but definitely not the least is Celine for making her time to actually come here today. So yeah, do check out her books uh, in support of Black Lives and also do check out her blogs. Uh, I believe it is called, where is it? Oh yeah. Oh, okay, thirdculturethinking.food.blog. Am I right? Am I right about that? Yeah. All right. Exactly right. <laughs> I was wondering the food part. I hope I didn't say it wrong. 
Okay, and with yeah, that, no, also... it was going to be a recipe blog and then turned into QCK. <laughs> Our life is a melting pot of it's varieties of ingredients, anyway, so it does make sense to the, to the next step. <laughs> okay, so yeah, with exactly. that, there's also, there's also some referral code for you guys. It's there for Airbnb. And if you all are interested to try out your own podcasting, you can earn yourself a $10 credit for StreamYard, which is the software I'm using. And of course, Canva, which I I had used in order to create our promotional materials. So yeah, other than that, guys, please take care of yourselves. We are coming to the end of 2020. Hopefully 2021 will be a better year. Um, other than that, do take care of yourself, uh, stay safe, put on your mask, take out your precaution, 2021 will be a better year, but it also take our part to make it better. So with that, have a good day, everyone, and or good night, and see you. Bye. Bye.